what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be talking about app tracking privacy and getting permission from the user to be tracked in your app so a little bit of background here we are on the apple uh, developer website and the page for uh, tracking and you know privacy a lot of you may know that apple rolls out this feature where apps need to disclose things like um, privacy related data tracking. And along with that, they also added this new permission that us app developers need to get from the user to do things like use a lot of the platforms uh, to show ads. Um, of course, Facebook and Google are both very upset about this, but we do need to add this uh, to track the user, uh, something called the IDFA, which is their identifier uh, that advertising, uh, you know, plugins and frameworks to use. So we're going to talk about how to request this permission. So if that all sounds good, make sure you start by just throwing the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and let's get into some privacy and app tracking. All right, we're gonna start by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. I'm gonna stick with the app template. Let's go ahead and call this project. Let's go ahead and call it uh, Tracker. Make sure your language is Swift, your lifecycle UI kit and your interface is storyboard. We're not going to really be doing too much interface. It'll all be programmatic, but go ahead and create it, save it wherever you'd like. First things first, what we need to do is jump into our view controller. And I'm also going to select a simulator here. And let's just go ahead and give it a run. So it's built in ready for us. I'm also going to close this right panel since we don't need it. Now, the first thing we're gonna actually do implementation wise is I'm gonna add a button to the middle of the screen. And when we, when we go ahead and uh, tap on that button, we're gonna request uh, permission to track the user. And we'll see how to do that in a moment. So I'm just gonna add a button here, very vanilla-esque button, nothing too fancy. We're not gonna stylize it or anything too much. Let's add sub view button there. Let's go ahead and also center it, view.center. And we do want to give it a title so we can actually see something. Let's see, let's call it get permission for a state of normal. And when we tap on this button, we want something to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a target here. The action is going to be did tap button. And the event is going to be touch up inside. Let's go ahead and create that function right down here. And it's a selector, so it's annotated at objc. Just like that, let's go ahead and give it a run one more time. Make sure our button is indeed showing up and bear with it, bear with it. We should see it momentarily in the middle of our screen, unless I forgot something and screwed it up. Ah, there it is, it's white. That helps <laughs> in dark mode. So, uh, so cool. So when we tap on this, what we wanna do is actually request permission. Now, privacy is such a big deal to Apple and there's app tracking transparency that Apple actually made a whole framework out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and import app tracking transparency. And uh, if you were to ask me my hunches, Apple has a big intention to expand upon um, whatever they're gonna be doing here, which is why they bundled it into a framework already. Um, and basically from this uh, framework, once we've imported it, we can use something called the AT uh, tracking manager, AT for app tracking or app transparency rather. And off of this, we are going to call a static function, and this is going to be request authorization. And basically, it takes no parameters, and it'll give us back a uh, completion handler, which is a closure with a single parameter, which is the status after the user has either allowed or you know, uh, denied permission to track. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we are going to switch over this status. I'm going to hit command B so it gives us the error. We can click fix on it and it's going to go ahead and stub out all of the cases. Let's go ahead and replace all these code complete blocks with a break. And we're almost ready to run it. Let me go ahead and jump into our info P list. One more thing that you need to do here is just like any other permission you're getting from the user, whether it's the mic or camera or whatever, you need to go ahead and add in a privacy usage description here. So the description we care about is the tracking usage description. Now, basically in the string, you want to basically tell the user why you want to track them. Uh, this is a pretty contentious topic at the moment, because if you say something like, please allow 
so we can show you ads. Uh, not a lot of people are going to allow it, but let's just go with that. Please allow so we can serve you personalized ads. Um, and now you can go ahead and give it a run. And a lot of you that are watching know how big of a topic this is, but let's go ahead and hit this button. And what we'll see here is allow tracker to track your activity across other companies, apps, and websites. And there is our string. And we have two options. Instead of deny, it's ask app not to track and allow. So we're going to go ahead and allow it there. And we don't actually see anything on the screen or printing because we didn't do anything. But what we can go ahead and do is in the authorized here, let's go ahead and add a print statement for allowed. And if we go ahead and run it again, if I tap on this, you'll see that we don't get the prompt because we allowed it already. But we do see in the console down here that we got allowed printed out. So that's the very, very basic crash course of how to request tracking permission from a user. Uh, I'm a pretty big you know, advocate for privacy and all, but we'll see how this you know, plays into the hands of you know, Google AdMob and adding Facebook ads to your app, so on and so forth. If you use any of those products, uh, all of them have uh, released you know, guidance and documentation on how to migrate to their newer versions of their SDKs uh, and CocoaPods. So definitely have a look there. Um, that's all I've really got for you guys today. Pretty short and simple video. If you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below, what do you think of this whole you know, new tracking permission thing? I, I'm always curious to hear what folks think um, about Apple doing this. Is this kind of a dig at Facebook or do you think it really actually helps people? Because uh, most people, in my opinion, won't be allowing tracking uh, because it's creepy and a lot of people don't want personalized ads. So that all said, thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.